Hey folks, it's time for another TWIP Pro Critique session. This is session number eight. I'm sitting down with Tim Engel to discuss some of the latest submissions to the TWIP Pro community. This is TWIP. All right, it is that time again. Time for another TWIP Pro image critique. This is a a uh, session that we put together to kind of go through some of the images and give some constructive criticism to images that have been submitted to the hashtag photo critique channel within TWIP Pro. Tim Engel, my friend, is here to step through some of the images and give us his thoughts and constructive criticism on these images. And now, you know, and Tim, welcome, first of all, welcome, Frederick, welcome to the critique. thank you. Thanks for wanting to have my opinion on today. Uh, yeah, it's good, it's good. You know, it's it's good. I like doing the rotation with, with different members in the community to kind of talk about to, uh, these images to get different perspectives. Because as we both know, as everyone knows, with photography, there's no one right way to do things, right? So everything, totally. I, everything yeah. is subjective, right? No, and I've enjoyed the last critiques and I want to thank you for giving me the hardest bunch to critique. <laughs> That's good, right? Jerk. There's some amazing. <laughs> there's some amazing work coming with Twit Pro. Sorry, I know, you like know? the quality of work in there is like, I've, yeah. It's whatever. intimidating. It's intimidating. And now, but it's now you like just watching these critiques. It's like ah, yeah, I can do that. But then when you actually have to criticize or give substantive input on someone's image, it's already stellar. It's humbling, is it not? Well, and I spend my days with, you know, doctors, lawyers, models, you know, and then you throw me with this stuff that's like, you know, epic animals and sceneries. And so <laughs> thank you for that. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right, let's dive right in, man. Um, there's, there's, we've got a group. I think this might be the largest group of images that we've had to go through. So yeah, it's a good group. It is a good group. I want to step relatively quickly through these. The first one is from member Craig Stamfley. And it is um, you have a you have a copy of these images on your desktop. So I do. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, this is the underwater shot with the woman in the red the red dress, kind of floating. Uh, your thoughts? Well, I mean, I'm I'm going to go into good, and then I'm going to go if there's any like critiques. Because first off, I mean, the colors on this shot I love. The tone of the pool with the red dress is amazing, and then the texture of the water, um, you know, and then. Obviously, I look at it from shooting underwater and kind of like am thoroughly impressed that, you know, I've tried things and I can't get anything in focus and it looks terrible. So this is amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, if I have if I have cropping issues, I mean, it's like I think that, you know, you could center the image with a little more space on the top to balance it with the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, that's a preference of mine, maybe that I might do if it was my image. Um, you know, it, it's it's a it's a tough critique. I mean, it's like. You know, right. It's like you, it's, it's weird because you're like you are like searching for something negative to say about the image. But the, no, <laughs> it's it's like, like, this image is ridiculously I mean, cool. Her dress should have been blue. No, that's not it. No, yeah. red was amazing. And like I say, the combo of the water and the, the red dress is, is wonderful. And watching Craig do and I've seen his other pool stuff. It's like he, it's such an incredible body of work in general. Yeah. I mean, this is you know, this is gallery stuff that needs to be printed and hung. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I could see this hanging in the gallery. My my thoughts on this image are, uh, yeah, I don't have any negative criticisms of this image. It's like my my smell test is, would this look awesome hanging in a gallery printed big? And no yeah. doubt it would. And I have some questions for Craig though, which I hope hopefully he can address within the within Twip Pro, in the in the photo critique channel. Um, I know he shot this in a pool, and I know he has a pool in his backyard. I'm wondering, is this the pool in his backyard? And if so, was there a horizon line or or some sort of indicator in the background, like where the where the wall of the pool meets the yeah. base of the pool that he cloned out to make it look like a seamless background? I'm I'm fairly sure he did that, but I it's it's seamless. I can't tell where he did it. Yeah, it's super like infinity pool looking. Right. Yeah. I mean, this could this could be anywhere. So it's a fantastic image. I love the color, the juxtaposition of the cools and the warms with the dress yeah. and, and the aqua marine. Um, I love the distorted reflection of the figure above the water. Her pose is really cool. The pointed toes. Yeah. You know, it's it's a great shot. It is a great shot. So congratulations. Kudos 
to Craig Stanfield. Thanks for submitting this, man. I'd love to know the story behind this. Like, what's the behind the scene? Uh, is this is this one in a series? Is this it was a standalone? Was this just yeah. done for fun? Was it done for her? What you know? So tell I us more about this. Some BTS video, maybe. Yeah, something, something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, so kudos, congratulations. Was it a warm pool? Yeah, well, maybe it was a warm pool. It was like, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Was it heated? Yeah. That's the cool thing about these underwater shots, right? Because there's very few points of references underwater because we don't, we don't, in our brains, we don't have a lot of, this is what this looks like underwater. So you can, you can do a lot of cool stuff. I, I would imagine I've never shot underwater, but I can imagine. Yeah, no, totally. It's like, yeah. it's just, another, it's a whole nother world. It's like, yeah. And, and I'm sure every image is different. I mean, he could have shot the next one image and it's 100% different with the reflection. Right. Even the next, yeah, the next snap of the shutter is completely different. Yeah. Which everything... I think is in itself is kind of an awesome thing. Yeah. No, he did a really good job on this one. All right. Let's move on to the next shot here. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. So let me, uh, let's bring this up here. Maybe if I click the right computer, it'll work. There we go. So this is a shot. It looks like an industrial scene here with a woman laying on a chair, leaning back and and looks like she's either smoking or vaping or something, right? Yeah, and I think from the description, it was a five-image composite. Oh, wow, yes, that's right, yeah. So, which, again, I'm not a compositor, and, you know, first look at this is I'm, I'm impressed. It's like I was trying to like, find holes in the composite, and there's not really any of those to be found. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only kind of thing I was getting in on is, and this is a, such a simple note, is that the toolbox is smoother a little bit than some of the textured surroundings. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the only place I felt like I could say, hey, that looked like it was added in. Yeah. Uh, but even the shadow was held nice with that. Um, you know, the smoke, I think, was added in on there, and it looks good. I mean, you have smoke on the hand. You know, the direction of the smoke could have been slightly different on that, on her hand, on the cigar. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it's going at an angle that's not necessarily correct. I think it's going to a, kind of away from the away from it. The and smoke so, that the smoke that's coming off of this cigar or whatever that is. Yeah, so it should be going straight up. I think is the only critique I could get on that one. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. Smoke is unpredictable, so you right. could take some license so that was, with that. You know, again, it's it's a great composite and trying to yeah. trying to find whatever little things that I might catch if I was working on it. Yeah, and I when I look at these kind of images, I just kind of I think a couple of directions. I I think would this image look good in black and white? Possibly, but the color in this image adds to it. It needs yeah, it needs the the different colored corners. surfaces and the grunge and all that yep. in there. Yeah, so that definitely adds to it. I think about does this image have a main subject? Yes, absolutely. The girl is the main subject. Every else everything else in the image is supporting her. Um, yeah. And then compositionally, she's she's relatively. I think she's in the center of the frame, which is fine, right? I mean, for this right. kind of shot, it's totally fine. Um, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm really digging this. And then the fact that he put this together. So then my question to um, who shot this? This is Houston by member Houston. It's called Working Girl. So I'm wondering what what again? What is this image for? Like was yeah. this was this just Houston? Was this was this image you just trying to exercise your compositing skills or was there a means to an end for this? Was this illustra right. illustrative of a, of a story for a magazine or something? What was this shot for? So, yeah. yeah and, what's what's, and, and more importantly, what's the story here? We know it's working girl by the title, but what is the story? Like, like, is this, is, you know, she just got off work and she's getting ready to go home. She's waiting on her Uber. So she decided to have a quick smoke, you know? <laughs> yeah. She's got her toolbox. She's ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I dig it. And it, it I think that the thing, the cool thing about this is that it's making me think like that. Sure. Right. But so my brain has gone beyond, oh, there's a, there's a distracting element in there. So this is bugging No, there's me. a, there's a, there's a little bit of a story with it. You could easily have just done a hot model composited on there, just standing there looking beautiful and with no, no story to it. And there's a definitely a, a story with the toolbox and the cigar and the relaxed pose and the leaning back. So yeah. 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 And those are some, some killer superhero boots she's got on there, too. It's crazy. Yeah. And how does she keep her boots so clean working there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Houston, you should put some mud on those boots. That's right. <laughs> no, great shot, though. Congratulations, Houston. I love it. Love it. Love yeah. It. And I think your point, too, about a lot of these images, it's like, who is the end client? 
Yeah. You know, I think that can that can change even a discussion of a critique is like, is it for the client? And was the client satisfied? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Or was it just for yourself and you were practicing? Right. And if so, what what were you exercising? Exercise? Yeah. Was it compositing? Let's see if I can composite this. Or is it lighting? Let's see if I can simulate artificial lighting or whatever. Yeah, right. totally. Yeah. So let's move on to this next shot. Uh, this is a wolf in the snow. Look at that. So, yeah, again, another like, you know, I don't shoot any wildlife other than my dog. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not wild. But this is a gorgeous shot. I mean, it's to start with, it's like, I love the composition of this. The lines are so nice. Yeah. Um, this is from Howard. I remember Howard, and he's titled The Sleeping in the S or Wolf Sleeping in the Snow. He says he just captured this image this morning. Um, this morning at a trip to Lakota Wolf Preserve in northern wow. New Jersey. Um, okay, wow. So this is the real deal. This is a yeah. wolf, literally a wolf that he saw sleeping one morning in the snow. It's crazy. Yeah, no, I think it's gorgeous. The texture and the detail on the face is great. The fall off in the background. Um, I mean, getting exposures in the snow to begin with sometimes are tricky. Mm -hmm. um, and then to get all that to hold... The only thing I caught on this file was in the lower corner a little bit. There were some circles, and those circles are almost too perfect to look like occurrences in the snow. Mm. Almost feels like it was potentially a dust or something else in, in the there. Sensor dust, yeah. Yeah, you see that. There's a larger one kind of below the nose, mm -hmm. straight down, mm -hmm. um, and then a little smaller one up higher, and then maybe one to the left, kind of from the ear down. And those are just small spots <clears throat> that I might kind of clone out because my eye went to it mm -hmm. yeah and so i think it was an element that i might eliminate if my eye goes there do you think this is you think this shot i'm i'm looking closely at it and i want to say that it's not black and white but it could easily just be black and white right i think it's black and white i but it, yeah I, I that was my first guess but of course it's you know the snow there's no color so it's a hard reference to yeah me. and it's a gray wolf right so <laughs> I'm wondering, sure. I'm wondering, so Howard, if you could let us know if this image is this, uh, was this a color shot or black and white, which is kind of cool when you think about it, if you have to ask that question, that For was sure. a seriously yeah. monochromatic scene that he captured there, right? Yeah, but no, I think, you know, in, in the, the discussion here, like we said, is like, is this worthy of printing and putting on a wall? Yeah, I think yeah. this is another great shot. That's a great print. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It's really cool. I'd like to see and Howard, a, I'd be curious what lens you use. It looks like. We're in the 300 millimeter range because that fall off. Yeah, the fall off. This the snow in the foreground is is out of focus. The wolf is tack sharp, and then it falls off. Even in the fur behind the wolf's head, it's starting to fall off. So, yeah, so I'd be curious just just for fun to know the uh, the lens and the the info on that shot, the metadata. Yeah, wouldn't this look good as a set though? I'd love to see this as a set, like a, sure, like three different three different like the wolf sleeping the wolf running the wolf peeking from behind a tree you know i'd love to see different different shots of this guy yeah no a series would be cool yeah that is really cool Very good no and i think this is absolutely kind of a print that somebody would buy so I mean, you print that nice that's an easy one to to market right yeah especially again in a set like at that gallery show that you did one of the artists that was exhibiting had a had a a set of images that the images look great on their own i forget what it was the like, waves or what was it was it waves that one i think so one? yeah yeah the waves yeah. yeah i think any one of the images would be okay on its own but together it was powerful you know because it was like yeah totally yeah very very cool stuff all right here's the next one uh it's a bird on a wire looks like so yeah i you see mean that one um yeah, again, this, one, cool... this, is, this is from howard as well so he yes. called this one bird ponders the mesas <laughs> I mean, Howard's getting out and shooting some stuff, which good. is awesome. Yeah, I good mean, going, Howard. Yeah. Yeah. And then just the idea of catching this shot. Um, you know, the only thing I thought is I might take that blue of the sky and, you know, make it a little more blue. Mm -hmm. More um, saturated? A little more. I might up the saturation on that. I might um, do a tiny bit of saturation work and maybe a tiny bit of clarity in the mountains, even though I like them soft because the just, you know, the, the, the difference between the bird and the being sharp and the, the lower mountains being kind of like soft is nice. Mm -hmm. But I think just maybe a little saturation work on that. I like the length of it. I like the odd crop of it. Mm -hmm. I like that long line and the use of the negative space. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, Howard has got a pretty good compositional eye. 
Yeah, and Howard Howard has a diverse set of work as well. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like yeah, yeah. This is, this is really cool. I like it. But Howard, here's here's a question for you. The ultimate question: What kind of bird is that? That's right. <laughs> it's the kind that flies, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, no, and his lines are perfectly straight. I was like, yep. pulling my mouse on it. I'm like, those are dead on. Yeah, everything's dead on. Yeah, my my um, my comment is the same as yours. The only thing I would I would have liked to see on this image is a little bit more saturation because you've yeah. got you've got those primary colors going on the red and the blues, and I want to I would have loved to see those pop a little bit, but that's I'm literally splitting hairs, right? So, yeah, yeah. So good good work on that one. All right, so let's go on to the next image. This one is from member Kyle Nishioka, who has guest critiqued with me before. Um, this image, what did he title this image? Let me find this in Twit Pro. He titled this one, Night Attack Live at Dragon Con. <laughs> he says, Michael Rooker, he's, oh yeah. Oh, the guy who plays Yandu from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, and of course, it was Walking Dead, too, for a long time. Right. Oh, yeah. He was Merle, Merle. right? Merle. Merle, yeah. Uh, horse playing with Justin Robert Young at a live recording of the Night Attack podcast at Dragon Con. Interesting. Okay, so this is this is more of a candid, so good. You know, yeah, we don't, we don't get many candids in here. I mean, it's right? like, it's, it's hard for me to get references to what this is. Um. Because there's nothing that's telling me what, other than there's a guy. I mean, you know, horse horse playing, yeah, horse playing, yeah. I mean, was this a you know, was it a self defense demo? And this is you know a chokehold that he's laughing about, and mm -hmm. the guy's like, oh, you got me. Um, so it's hard to know kind of like what this was for. Um, you know, I mean, if anything, on the 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 skin tones could be you know worked a little bit. There's some red in that stuff that might be able to be pulled back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some highlights I might kind of pull down on the cheeks and things like that if I'm getting crit critical on face. Um, but again, it's like it's a moment. So how do you critique a moment? Um, it, it's yeah. It's, yeah, it's you can't you can't really. Yeah, you're right. It, it, this is a candid. So you can't really critique it um, that much. But candids. And he did exactly the right thing with a candid like this one, because on its own, if you were to just see this, you know, you'd be like, OK, whatever. There's a bunch of people. Clearly, two of them may be important because they're carrying microphones, but you don't know who they are at all. You don't know the context. Right. You have if you just saw this laying on a coffee table somewhere, you wouldn't know what was going on because you because right. uh, Michael Rooker isn't necessarily identifiable that much in here. So this right. is one of those yep. instances where captions are critical. Yeah, right? for because sure. Because you read the caption and now it all makes sense. It's like, oh, this is the famous guy's horse playing with a host of a podcast at a conference. And, you know, and it, it humanizes Michael Rooker. And it's like, oh, this guy isn't a snotty, you know, stuck up actor. He's playing around. Not only is he, you know, doing podcasts, you know, he's also horse playing with the, with the people and, and close to the audience and having fun. So, yeah, I mean, the, something cool with this would be you know, a series of three or four images that are referenced, you know, like hanging out, normal shot, you know, beginning of horseplay through, you know, like a series almost like the whole kind of like sequence happening, I think would be kind of cool with something like this, which you probably, you may have because I'm sure you shot a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Kyle, I'd love to see the, the, I'm sure you got other images in this series. I'd love to see if you got it, have any more images that have Michael Rooker a little bit more recognizable. So he could see who he is. And like like Tim was saying, are there any images that could surround this one to make this a you know a more identifiable set or a more complete set? Yeah, then you're getting into a little story I think that could be cool. Yep, I agree. Yeah. All right, this next image, uh, thanks Kyle for submitting this. Um, the next image is from Rob. He calls this one Sunrise on the Outer Bank. So I think we're going to title this. Uh, Outer, Banks. Outer Banks. This critique is now the fine art gang yeah right this is beautiful isn't it oh yeah again it's like gee frederick thanks for giving me this to critique <laughs> hey no it's one like, said life was easy sorry geez so i mean <laughs> you know going through it it's like his balance of you know of the images is, is amazing i think um you know it's like i thought at first like oh maybe he could have centered that structure but then i'm like no i like it off center now mm -hmm. um you know the tones are phenomenal uh, it's obviously probably like 
a, you know, a 20 to 30 second exposure maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. which takes it into a whole, I mean, this image by itself, had you shot it, let's just say at 60 to the second, I don't think would have had the strength. Um, the painterly effect that that slow shutter speed gives you, I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I'd love, this is another one, print this thing. This would be gorgeous. I think as a print. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I'm looking at a low res file and I'm impressed. I think in a big high res, it would be like amazing. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I no. love the tones of this. I love the the purples and the the blues and yeah, I've been a fan. I'm, I I'd be curious to know what the 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 technical exposure yeah. data is for this. Like you said, it's like a tw probably a twenty second ish exposure, maybe. Um, on obviously on a tripod. Um, but did he use neutral de neutral density filters on there or like what what did he do? What did he shoot this with? Yeah. Yeah, and I know from having messed with some of stuff like this, you know, you don't get a massive amount of shots. You get like five or six shots, you know, in a mm -hmm. span that's going to be this light. Before you lose the light, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and this is this different. one illustrates the importance of a good tripod as well, right? Because you, yeah. you get, if you, this would be, you could still get the blurry clouds and water um, with a long exposure, but the things that should be sharp, if your tripod moves a little bit during that exposure, it ruins the whole thing. And you need the, you know, a, a wireless release. Mm -hmm. You can't touch the camera. You know, there's all those pieces. That, yeah. You know, you know that, you know, the trick, the trick, if you don't have a wireless release timer. or a, a wired or wireless remote shutter release, right? Yep. What is it? The timer, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hit the, yeah. hit the, put it in self timer mode, get your exposure set, put it in self timer it. mode, hit it and step back. Give, give it time. I learned the hard way putting it on a deck that my step on the deck kept shaking it because the what, deck, the plank. On what deck? What do you mean? I had shot an image similar like this, well, lo, with a long exposure, and it was on a wood deck, and I would step back, and the plank would move and move the leg of the tripod. Oh, right, right. So. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the joy of long exposures. That's what that yeah. is. Yeah, so that was uh, some, some definitely uh, experimentation. Yeah. All right, here's so. a, this next shot. Uh, thanks, Rob, for the sunrise on the Outer Banks shot. This next one is uh, from, uh, this is from Mark Dom. Mark. Domke. Yeah. Mark Domke. Yeah. Snow on a cornfield. This is a drone shot. Interesting. Yeah, I've not seen a lot of drone shots like lately, but I really like this, too. I mean, it's another, another one. It's like... This you know, one makes you think. His... When I look at this one, it makes you think because you know, yeah, I did a double take at it because he's yeah. got, he's shot from above, obviously, which is in high, which is a, a an unusual angle that we don't see every day. So you it in, instantly have it adds interest to the composition. He's totally, cropped it yeah. cropped it long, which makes sense. Um, this these this cornfield is a you know a dying or you know, in a dormant, a dormant, yeah. thank you. A dormant cornfield yeah. with snow. Uh, we don't get much snow here in California. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, you had, you had epic hail. So, you know, right. Right. We did have hail here, but you know, you look at this thing and it's like, oh, okay, oh, well, what is going on there? And right. it, it, it's just, you know, he's got, what is it? One, two, three, four, five rows going through there. Yeah. And then the long shadows. So he chose to shoot it at a time of day where the shadows were long, adding another dimension. So you've a got that and, yeah, the no, diagonal dimension and a horizontal dimension. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's cool. I like that. No. And I think it's, it shows a lot finding that point of view and like getting that stuff and the lines are totally straight on that. Um, but like you say, I love the fact that there's like these levels of texture and detail that you kind of like start looking into and spend a little bit of time with mm -hmm. yeah this is a, one of those fine art like we said blow it up big and hang yeah. it behind the couch right this is this is like that kind of shot that you'd see hanging in the gallery of or in the the lobby of a hotel or behind your couch or something like that cause... yeah and another one that's like you know this would make a great series this style mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's all about the series man it's all about i the told series. you this is the fine art critique section today it's <laughs> yeah. just like so good job, Mark Domke. That was uh, Domke, D-A-H-M-K-E. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Mark Domke. Um, all right. So the next shot here is from Mark Harris. He calls this one body, body land. What body landscape? So with land yeah. in brackets there. So play on words there. So let's bring that up. What do you think of this one? I like it. Um, 
again, another nice shot, another another fine art piece, I think. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I like the negative space. Um, I like the, the exposure fall off. The only thing that caught my eye initially was towards the, the lower part of the back mm-hmm. um, or upper back. But there's a there's a skin imperfection mm-hmm. that, that and I look at it like if I had edited this, I probably would have taken that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have gone with a tiny bit more exposure to the left, just a little more of that line, because I feel like if it's on certain monitors, people might lose some of that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the highlights held really well. The texture held really well. Um, the blacks look amazing. It's crisp on that edge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of another, you know, another great. I was, Fine you know what, honestly, I thought about that, the the imperfection, the skin imperfection on the back there, on her back. And my first reaction was what you said. Like, yeah, maybe I would have taken that out. I may have taken it out. But then I thought about it and I thought, you know, that kind of humanizes this, this, this shot. It, you know, we all have imperfection. Well, you guys have imperfections. I don't have any. So. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> no, yeah, of course. I don't have no imperfections here. You're um, Frederick Van. Ah, come on, you know. Uh, but no, it looks. I I thought it, it adds balance to it. It, it you well, know. And I, and I, yeah, but then my eye goes to it. So if my eye's going there first, mm-hmm. is that what I want? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's you know it's another tough call of like what do you do? Yeah, that brings up a good point. I mean, because you you shoot women, you photograph women and men and people mm-hmm. generally all the time, right? And yeah. And you, you're an expert retoucher. You know how to make images look fantastic. So when you're when you're doing that, where is the line between taking a shot and taking off imperfections on a face versus leaving them in? And I say that I say that because I, I remember talking to a wedding photographer once, and the wedding photographer was like, you know, I, I they hesitate to do too much retouching, especially on older people like the grandparents and great grandparents, et cetera, because it's that the lines and the imperfections on their face that adds, that makes them who they are. Sure. Like don't take off that mole because it's no longer grandma without that mole. Like where, like as a person who's doing beauty type photography, you Timmy, where, like, where do you draw the line between, Hey, there's a little tiny imperfection on her skin versus that needs to go. Um, my first thing I think is, is it something that they have permanently? So if it's a blemish, that's not a permanent thing. Mm-hmm. So, I'll, you know, I'll remove something like that. I look for, you know, I'll, I'll go with skin deviations and, and tone deviations in the skin. Um, I won't go for structural stuff. A lot of times warts I leave because that definitely is, you mentioned earlier, humanizing somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but there's also times that clients are like, hey, get rid of that. Um, so it's that balance between the two. I'm not a big fan of structurally changing stuff. Um, the only time I really do that stuff is with clothing that may have like not fitted well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I'll push it back into a place that's, um, you know, what it should have been probably. Mm-hmm. I had some people years ago, a retoucher talking to me and he said, you know, there are a lot of, when people were talking about, you know, don't, don't retouch and be natural. And he says, you know, when we talk to people, people's faces are moving. So we don't fixate on any single point. Right. Mm-hmm. He says, yeah. but when you have a picture, you fixate on points. And he says, if that point is distracting or not right, he says, then I work on it. Yeah. Yeah. We generally um, have a triangle. We look at the eyes and then the mouth and then back up yeah. to the eyes. And we, we, when we're having a conversation with someone, right? Yeah. But I definitely am not about like structurally altering what people are, you know, what about, trying- what about like speaking of structural here's okay. Here's, Here's a use case, right? You're you're you've shot a model, male or female, who cares, um, and they're smiling or whatever, and they have, uh, let's say, yellow teeth, right? And like sure. that's part of them, right? But do you ask them? Do you say you know because they may want them to stay like that? They may they may be fine with them looking like that, and they may be offended. Worse, they may be offended if you make their teeth whiter than they are, right? You do dental work on them. <laughs> well, that stuff comes up with corporate things all the time. Yeah. So eye, eye whitening and teeth whitening are one of the biggest requests that I get. Mm. So I actually get them. They'll look because in most cases I proof on site. So I'll have it going over to the iPad or the laptop and they'll say, can you make my teeth and eyes whiter? I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, with models... You know, I'm, you know, with beauty stuff, rarely do you have a big toothy smile. 
Right. So it doesn't come up a ton. Okay. But uh, even in that scenario, I think I, I, it goes along the lines of like giving good eye whites for the models on that stuff. Uh, I'll just do it. I've never had a model come back on it. Um, and say, hey, you you made me look more beautiful than I am. How dare you? But, I, but, it, but it's also a point in which like if you have a smile that's totally yellow and it's a color shift, then your eye is going to go right to it. So it's going to be a distracting element. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I would bring it back to white. All right. What about I, what, the same for whites of the eyes? Are you yeah, uh, it's like you know, if it's bloodshot or red or, yeah. or things like that, I'll definitely bring eye. I don't. I, I used to be way more getting crazy whites, mm-hmm. but over the last couple of years, I actually have toned back to where I'll get rid of bloodshot stuff, but I'll keep some graying and some you know, so the eyes aren't totally true white. Because what about the actually, retinas? Because when it like yeah, it, yeah, I I tend to lean towards lightening the retinas to bring out the color of the eye just a little yeah. bit, but not you don't want them to look like a vampire, but you know, but to lighten them to bring it out a little bit. Do you do that as well? And yeah, and there's tricks too. Like if you're using a single light, the opposite, you know, the, the angle of incidence, the opposite point, the light would escape the eye. I'll lighten that area because that's what would naturally occur. Yeah, yeah. So okay. there's little tricks to that stuff. All right. Well, thanks, Mark Harris, for your uh, body landscape. As a, and another one that I think I'm sure is going to be a great series. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I've and we've seen this before. Like Craig Craig Colvin is you know well known for doing these kind of this kind of shot or this kind of body landscape ish photography. And yeah. I've seen I've seen a lot of his series, and they do work together. You know, and it's I think doing lamp body landscape type photography is is much like that underwater stuff that we were talking about. With yeah. Craig Stanfley. It's where you, you know, one shot to the next is going to be completely different because the human body is a natural thing and it's always moving and in motion and it's very hard to get an identical shot from shot to shot. So yeah. very, very similar. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. All right. So this next shot is from our community manager, Mr. Christopher Barry, a self-portrait. Let's bring that up. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Here's Chris Berry, self-portrait. Just submitted this right on the line before we uh, started recording this today. What are, what are your thoughts on this shot? He calls yeah, this one I mean, Angry. Another, the title another, of this is Angry. Yeah, another strong, powerful shot. I mean, you know, from a technical standpoint, there's a lot of good things going. I love the fact that the the background has separation between his upper shoulder. I like, um, you know, I think it's interesting that there's no eye contact. I think it adds to what his title was, which was Angry. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I think having eye contact may have changed that totally. Uh, only critique I might have is on the forehead. I would like to have seen maybe a little more um, detail. There's an area that's blown out. Yeah. Right on the right on the forehead. Yeah. Which is, I think, was recoverable. On that if he stuff. Shot, yeah, um, he sh- I'm sure he shot this in raw. Yeah, so that probably is recoverable. Yeah. So um, I think I would have, you know, I again looking at it, if I was editing it, I would have. Um, Brought that back in. The shoulders a little close to being hot. I might dodge the shoulder down a tiny bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's, it's. I love the crop on this. I love the shape of it a lot. I think it's very strong. Yeah. Um, you know, the light on the cheek and on the lips and the nose. I think that stuff's you know spot on. And even that little bit that hits the ear, it gives me enough of an outline of the ear that it's there, but doesn't detract from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's very well done, yeah, and and kudos to to Chris for for being brave enough to do a shot like this because I I I can't see myself I'll never say never but I can't see myself doing a shot like this of myself because I'm yeah just, no you know <laughs> me me either because well, I don't look like Chris for one but <laughs> I could, you yeah. know but but looking at the shot from a technical perspective I like the it's it's I see diagonal data in here right so in the upper left hand corner i see the gradient of the light grays and then all the skin tones in the middle where the subject uh-huh. is and then on the bottom right it's falling almost completely into black so yeah. it, it's a gradient all the way down with a little bit of interruption of the human form in there so from a technical standpoint I love that i agree with the highlight on on his head you probably burn that in or otherwise recover that data but i you know it, it's not it's not that egregious it's no. still a great shot right 
Um, and it's powerful, the expression on his face. And I, I misspoke before. I said that the title of this shot is Angry. It is actually Anger. So oh, Anger, yeah. Yeah, okay. so he titled this Anger. And he did a series. He's done a series of these kind of images over the past couple of um, couple of weeks or so, I think. Um, and he's Chris is channeling some family-type drama that went on in his life and and using photography as a way to express himself. You know, so this so this kind of image, I think, is even more powerful when you know that, hey, this isn't just, you know, someone who shot a model right. and said, give me a serious look. This is right. actually he was actually angry when he shot this. So, right. yeah. So that's Which, it makes you know, it even more a powerful. Photographer, that's an awesome way of self-expression. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm too shy to do stuff like that. So I'm, well, I'm, I'm the, I'm the guy peeking your... from behind the curtain. Through. <laughs> We'll shave your head and see what we can do. I'm thinking about it, man. I'm thinking about it. I can do it. Yeah, I always said when I get older, when when uh, you know when the crop starts thinning, I'm gonna get rid of it. And, you yeah, know, it's getting close to that time, bros. All right. <laughs> it might Let's be. Do... I may have another half a decade left, and then I'm gonna you know. I want to do off. a time lapse as that happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But kudos to Chris Berry, man. Christopher Berry, remember he's again he's our community manager, so. Uh, if you guys have feedback for Chris within Twit Pro, feel free to comment on this image and let them know what's going on. Also, if you have yeah. questions on how to navigate Twit Pro and Slack and all that, Twit or uh, Chris is a is a master of all that stuff. So yeah, reach out to him. All right, so that was Chris Berry's angry, and the last image, Tim Engel. Should we do this one? Are you sure? It's up to you. It's your call. <laughs> it's your show, Mister. <laughs> All right, this last image is from Tim Engel. I think this is the first time we've had an image on in an image critique to be critiqued by the creator of that image. Let's bring that up. I am going to rip this guy apart. Look at this. Look at who, who submitted this to Twip Pro? How dare they? <laughs> All right, so, so this, Tim, this, go this ahead, is go Amanda. Ahead. Yep. Amanda's fantastic. She is like a modern day 2018 Marilyn Monroe to me. Linda Evangelista is my my mirror of her. I see Marilyn Monroe in her whenever I see a shot of her from you. She yeah. looks like Marilyn. I was and Amanda. I have worked. I was her first photographer ever. I met with her and her mom long ago, and um, she's with an agency and killing it now. And it's wonderful to see her doing what she's doing. This shot was actually for a designer. The designer had made that outfit for a client. And wanted it photographed before it was shipped off, mm -hmm. um, and I and I want to say it was actually for a, show, a burlesque show, the the outfit. Mm. And so, in my thought process, and I'll say I'll go behind the scenes a little bit. I went to the to the dollar store, and it had those streamers in the background. So I got five sets of those streamers in different colors, and taped them up to a two by four, and they had two C stands on each side holding that up, and pumped light through the back a little bit and then used a huge hot light on the front to give it kind of that old Hollywood feel a little mm -hmm. bit. And, uh, you know, I guess if any critiques I had, um, you know, I, I, I went with almost what it was. I didn't do much work to it. I think there's some skin work I can still do on it that would make it a little stronger. Yeah. In the lower leg. Um, is this, is this what you said? One light source on there? One light source on her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What about retouching? Did you did you have to do much post production? On this? I didn't do much retouching on this one. I actually went into her lips and made sure the lip line was clean. Her eye whites were phenomenal. I cleaned up some stray hairs that I thought were distracting. Uh, there was one bobby pin that was showing um, over her left eye, above around the curl, mm -hmm. that was in there. That I actually took that bobby pin out because the light caught it and it was kind of like a little bright spot. Okay. Yeah, And so I took that out, um, but really nothing that took me any more than probably 10 minutes of retouching on this. Um, and then I just had done some uh, some work in Lightroom to kind of like bring the tones a little bit different and to flatten and crush some of the shadows. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you go. And actually, once I had decided on that color overlay, I basically copied and stamped all of those to all of the shots. In that series, yeah. Yeah, so it all stayed consistent. What uh, what you what would you have done differently in this shot? Um, if anything, I mean, I mean, there's still think you know I still think I could have separation in her hands in her gloves a little bit better. You know, it's black getting dark. I could open that up just a little bit. Um, 
you know, I, uh, the, the series has a few incarnations on it that I did throughout that shoot that, um, including like adding some, a fog machine to the background on some of them, which in some cases I thought was strong, but fog is always a hit or miss. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a compositor, so this is the, you know, I don't, this is what it is a little bit. So mm -hmm. I, I go with what I made and yeah. she's so phenomenal. It's hard to, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing with working with professional models, yeah. right? Because, you know, it, they make life much easier. It's it's hard to take a bad picture of them, at least pose wise. You yeah, know, professional. Mo I mean, having professional models, professional makeup, professional hair, and a wardrobe stylist. I am. My job is in is so easy in that case. I just try not to screw everything up. Just I set up the lights. You know, she goes and poses, and yeah. you know, ten minutes later we're done. It's just like it's ridiculous how quick and easy it is once you have a, a full you know crew. Yeah, yeah. No, I love you it. have to do justice to everybody, though. If you have a full crew and you screw it up, then you don't get a full crew again. Right, right. Yeah, don't be the weak link. Don't be the weak totally, link. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, man. We had a we had a lot of good submissions. We had Craig Stampfley, Houston, um, Howard submitted a couple of images, Kyle Nishioka, Rob with his sunrise on the Outer Banks. We had Mark Dom Domke. Um, with the cornfield aerial shot, we have Mark Harris with the body landscape, and Christopher Berry with the angry self portrait, and Tim Ingle with the shot of Amanda. So those yeah, good, I gotta good say, crop. you know, just in the Twip community in general, watching the images come across in the member shot category and in the critique category, um, I'm getting a lot out of it. I'm I'm I don't I don't always like chime in because I'm usually on the run. Mm -hmm. But, you know, listening to the discussions and watching the images come across and hearing the dissection um, has been very, I mean, I, I've looked at some of my work differently after reading some of the critiques on other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's been, it's, I, I, you know, I've really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been, Twip Pro has been a, a really pleasant surprise. You know, you think about the logistics of this and, you know, I say it over and over again, but the, the main reason I put this community together was to bring people like the ones that are in there together um, to interact and, and help lift each other up and answer questions and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And there's a bunch of cool stuff coming too. So this is just, this is like Twip Pro version one. There's still, more stuff to be released to go into twit pro so yeah and i yeah. think you know if you're a new photographer coming in it's going to be very helpful because i've not seen any egos that i've no. seen in other spots no egos and no trolls that's the no that was no. the main the main purpose of building this community the way i built it was to to build a gate to keep the keep the trolls out and you know the, the and trolls come with anonymity i think and that was that was that's, that's <laughs> there's, the no, yeah, there's no hiding here no hiding, no rocks to hide behind. So if you, you're Fix free to speak, name. you get free to speak, but uh, you also have the right to remain silent. So <laughs> no, and I've, and I've reached out for some technical questions to like Steve and having him as a resource was huge on on copywriting stuff. Yeah, yeah. So so, so Tim, you uh, this past weekend before we close this off, uh, this past weekend you had a milestone in your career, right? Uh, yeah, my first gallery showing you did congratulations after, man after i don't know 18 years ish so maybe yeah um i actually showed at a gallery i had six pieces that were up and i i have a i don't know i not i've had offers in the past and i just who knows why i've said no i don't know if it's a matter of like there's still always that stress of putting yourself out there like that yeah and and opening yourself up to that um um, I've ha I have a lot of things that I do that I feel like are fine art that I just um, have kept for myself and made. Yeah, you know, including the mud series, which I've made for kind of for me out of you know. And if so, it was very interesting and a very interesting process to go through and analyze your stuff that you're getting ready to show. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I looked at everything through a much finer microscope that it was going to be up, you know, on a wall in a gallery yeah yeah um and i could see where man i'll tell you if i did this regularly the level of stress just in that stuff on a regular basis would be tough yeah you know printing is pr I, guys who can get great prints and are great printers man i my hats are off to you because it took me three rounds to get close to where i want and i can still see things that i want out of prints wow wow so yeah, it's a. It's, yeah. Who, who was the interview? You made? The the guy that had the master printer at his place. What was the? 
Uh, um, Mar- San Francisco. Mar- uh, in, in San Francisco. Uh, what was the name of the place? The um, framing place. And oh, the, the- oh, yeah, that was um, uh, Michael Rubin. Yeah, yeah, Mike, yeah. I mean, Michael that, Rubin. I mean, uh, my hats off to him. Even too, it's like even getting mats made. You know, like mm-hmm. is a process. All that stuff, and it's like he has that stuff down to a science that mm-hmm. looks phenomenal for the average person. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, well, kudos, man. Congratulations. I'm glad and I got a chance. Thank you for coming by. You're welcome. I'm glad I got a chance to see you in there, basking in your glory. You know, and suit on and everything. It was it was, it was awesome to see you in there. It shows up for the rest of the month. So if anybody's in downtown Sacramento, if you, uh, you know, send me a note and I'll. Uh, what's the uh, What's the address? You know, is it the? Uh, oh, I don't have the address. It's on J see. Street. I think it's, it's on, on J Street. It's on J Street. Harlow's. It's a gallery. Yeah, yeah. You caught me off guard. I didn't know we were going to talk about it, <laughs> Frederick. Wait, you know what? Hey, this is. Let me pull this up right now. Let's just so that it's called. Uh, gra- I have your text Groundswell. message. Groundswell. Groundswell Aperture, um, and it is the address is where is it? Twenty five oh eight J Street, Sacramento, California, and yeah, their and their website is like Groundswell like- Groundswell Art dot com. Is the and the guy who does the uh, work with the waves. I, I mean, there's some great stuff in there. That that, that was a great show. Yeah, no, that was really good. Congratulations again, man. Thank you. All right, and if people want to connect with you other than the gallery, where where would you like them to go? Uh, Inglephoto.com. It's E-N-G-L-E-P-H-O-T-O.com. Instagram is Inglephoto Inc. or Tim Ingle. So I kind of have two Instagrams that I do different things with. Mm -hmm. Um, So those are the best spots. Really, yeah, yeah, go there. Cool, man. Go there and say hi. All right. Well, thank you, Tim, for sitting in for as a guest critic for this. Congratulations on your gallery show. And, uh, you know, thank well, you for letting me be critical. You're welcome. You're welcome. Always a pleasure to not have to do it by myself. So. <laughs> All right, man, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you around in Twip Pro. Thanks. All right. Peace. This is Twip.